I've placed the sample, uh, focused on it by eye, and I've readjusted the settings for the 63x objective. Now, importantly, one of the things I had to readjust was the pinhole size. So when I, we switched from 20x to 63x, the pinhole size is, is different. And so I had to go again to the longest wavelength floor for, hit 1AU. Uh, and if you recall, this was a different number before. Now it's 53 microns. So I did that, and then I fiddled a little bit with the master gain to make sure that there were no saturated pixels. Um, and now I have the following image, which we can look at. This is. Um, the, the mitochondria, this is the actin, and then these are the sort of uninteresting nuclei. Um, so this is a great starting point for further optimization. Um, and so first we're going to discuss uh, settings that can affect the contrast of the image. Uh, so how well we can see things that we know are real, in this case the mitochondria versus the background. Uh, and then we're going to uh, talk about um, things that can affect the resolution, okay? So the level of detail we can see in the sample. Um, so let me start um, by talking about things that can affect uh, the quality of the image. And so now, uh, when, we, when we make these adjustments here, if we go to live, we're not going to actually see the result of this because live doesn't doesn't do exactly what it says here. It's sort of a quicker uh, scanning mode. Uh, so we're going to use continuous instead, which does exactly everything that says here. Now, when we're in continuous, if we click it, you'll see that all three channels are now imaged uh, simultaneously because in continuous, it just does exactly what it says here. And here it says, okay, we want to image all these checked channels. So when you're using continuous mode, you want to uncheck the things that you're not working on both for speed and to avoid bleaching of things that we're not focused on at the moment. So if I go to continuous and I click on range indicator, um, you can see that um, you know it looks pretty good, but what other things can we do to improve quality? So one of the things we can do is averaging. So what averaging will do is uh, instead of going to each location once in the sweeping of the laser, it goes to each location however many times it says here. So you'll see that if we do 2x averaging, the frame time, the time it takes to image, is now double what it was before. So if we go to continuous, we can see whether that had any effect. So if we switch from no averaging, you can see there's a slight improvement in quality when you go to 2x, but it's really not very dramatic. Um, so if you don't really, don't really see much of an effect of averaging, there's really no point in doing it uh, because it'll just cost you time. Now let me, let me actually on purpose make the initial image worse so that you can actually see the effect of averaging because I want to illustrate a few things uh, regarding this feature. So um, I am going to uh, do the following. I'm going to reduce the laser power by a lot to 0.2%, and I'm going to increase the gain to get a much noisier image. I'm going to do that even, even more because I really want you to see the effect of averaging. OK, so now we have uh, kind of, I, I've already officially made a very, very noisy image um, because, again, I, I want to show you the effect of averaging. So, if I go to 2x averaging, I expect the frame time to double, and I expect the quality to improve. So you can see there's the improvement in quality, very clear from none to 2x. If I go to 4x, you can see that it takes even longer. You can actually see it sweeping, and the, the quality improves even further. If I go to 8x, there's a more subtle change in quality, and it doubled again. And if I go to 16x, it's really slow. And you can see just a very subtle increase in quality. So the point I want to make with this is that, uh, so several points. So the more you average, the better the image looks, but by a smaller and smaller amount. And um, so you know the, the difference between no averaging and 2x is usually bigger than the difference between 2 and 4x, which is bigger than the difference between 4 and 8x and 8x and 16x. So there's sort of diminishing returns to averaging. Um, that's one point that I, that I think was illustrated by what I just did. The other, which was illustrated by where we started and where we are now, is that um, averaging has a very noticeable effect on images that 
are um, very noisy to begin with, but it doesn't have such a noticeable effect on images that are already quite good, which is where we had started. Um, so, uh, you know, diminishing returns uh, and stronger effects on, on things that are noisy. Um, those are sort of two characteristics of averaging. Now, uh, you, you might be asking yourself, like, why would you do averaging at all? Uh, because I've already shown you a different way of improving the quality, uh, which is to lower the gain and increase the laser power. And that's indeed how we started on this particular channel a while ago. Um, and so, you know, what are the trade-offs between averaging and that? So if you recall, if you increase the laser power and lower the gain, you get higher quality, but you will get higher bleaching because you have a higher laser power. If you increase the averaging, you will also get higher bleaching because um, you're imaging the sample two times, four times, or eight times, or 16 times. But in addition, it will take longer. It doesn't take longer if we increase the laser power. So you can see that averaging has two disadvantages, higher bleaching and uh, that it will take longer. So then why would we ever do it? So the, the reasons, there, there's several reasons. Um, one is that even if you're delivering the same total amount of light, um, so let's say we had 2% laser, so four times more, or 4x averaging, it ends up being the case that having the laser go by in one pass at very high power is more damaging than having the same amount of light but distributed over multiple passes. So if you really want to minimize bleaching, averaging is a good way of doing it. Uh, the other reason is that um, you may reach this uh, point where if you increase the laser further, you don't actually see any changes in intensity because all your fluorophores are being excited and so there's nothing left for the laser to excite. So if you're in that situation, averaging is really the only way uh, to increase the quality further. Uh, so those are some, some reasons you might want to use averaging. Uh, an additional thing that's kind of a disadvantage of averaging is that you can't average different amounts for different channels. So if you have one channel that looks like this, but the others are very good, uh, high quality, you may want to average a lot in that channel and not in the others, but that's not possible. So you will have to pay the price in time for all the channels. What you can do if you want, if, if you're going to end up averaging, let's say, 4x in your noisiest channel, is at least not to um, overexpose the other channels to higher laser power. What you can do is you go to those channels, you divide the amount of laser power you're using by whatever the averaging is in the channel that you need to do averaging. Um, and then you just increase the master gain to compensate, that will make the initial images on the 488, for example, on the DAPI look worse. But when all the averaging is considered, um, they'll be just as good as where you started. So again, that's that's a way to, con to, 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 to not you know, overexpose things to laser uh, if you don't have to, because when you do averaging, all of the conditions will be chained together and will have the same amount of averaging. There is another parameter that you can adjust um, that also uh, can affect the quality, which is the speed. So remember, this is a laser scanning confocal. The uh, microscope points the laser into the top left-hand corner of the sample and then moves in a raster pattern. Um, as it does that, it's moving at a certain speed, which is controlled by this slider. So if you lower the speed, what you expect is the frame time to, sorry, to take longer uh, to scan the entire frame and each pixel, which will happen, you can see as you lower it, that number gets bigger and this number gets bigger. Uh, you expect more bleaching because the laser is on the sample for more time, but you also expect uh, higher quality um, because you get you have the opportunity to get more more light, more fluorescence light from each location. So let's say if that's true, I'm going to go to continuous, and as I lower the speed, it'll take longer, but hopefully you'll see the increase in quality. And you can, let me just bump this up a little bit so you can see more clearly. And let me adjust the focus. There we go. Um, so you can see that that, uh, you know, a, a frame time of five has higher quality than this. So um, what about scan speed versus averaging? So both of these take longer and bleach more than not doing them. Uh, we've already discussed how increasing the laser power bleaches more, but uh, doesn't have a time penalty. So would would you would we ever use uh, adjustments to scan speed? And the answer is usually not. Uh, usually it's best to maximize the scan speed. And the reason is 
uh, scan speed for the same amount investment of time as the averaging, it usually bleaches a little bit more. So it's worse for the sample to have it move the laser slowly across than to uh, go back and forth um, over the sample several times. Uh, that's just a, kind of an empirical thing that we've observed. So usually you just want to max it out. Um, the, the exceptions to this rule are, the problem with averaging is always factors of two. Whereas if you see here, if you lower the scan speed, this nine is just an arbitrary number. What you need to look at is this frame time. If you lower it from nine to eight, it did not double the amount of time. So you can make more subtle adjustments. On the other hand, uh, subtle adjustments have subtle effects. So um, you may end up having to make an adjustment here where you're just better off doing the equivalent averaging uh, in terms of the investment of time. You'll get similar quality, but a, a little bit less bleaching. Uh, so it's worth doing that. Um, there's another uh, condition under which uh, lowering the scan speed can have benefits, uh, which I'll discuss now in the context of bidirectional scanning. As I've mentioned throughout this training, this is a laser scanning confocal microscope, meaning that the laser moves in a raster pattern through the sample. Now, the details of that raster pattern are defined here in this direction button. Direction with this arrow, or unidirectional, means that the laser moves from left to right, one line, then the laser turns off, flies back, moves down one line, turns back on, and moves from left to right again. This is sort of like a typewriter pattern. If you click on this, and you don't need to worry about any of this stuff, the laser swings back and forth in a snake pattern. So obviously this is faster because as the laser goes back in this mode, it's imaging, whereas it flies back in this mode, um, it's off and it's waiting to turn on all the way at the left side. And you can see uh, that reflected in the frame time with bidirectional, the frame time is 316.51 milliseconds. With this one, it's 633. 0.02. So uh, this makes it seem like, okay, we should always use bidirectional. And that's actually usually the case. Uh, the only caveat here is when you use bidirectional, you want to make sure that there are no artifacts in the image. So to illustrate this, um, let me show you, uh, let's check this with the Alexa Floor 488. So if we go to continuous and we're on bidirectional mode, let me first make sure I'm nicely in focus. Um, so what you can see sometimes is, let me just put this near the edge. Um, you can see sometimes with bidirectional mode is if you have um, sort of lines or diagonal lines or very sharp edges, if you look at this very, very closely, uh, with bidirectional on, it sometimes looks a little bit more jagged than with unidirectional. And uh, here it's almost imperceptible. But if, if you're in a situation where that's uh, happening, then uh, you might be better off with unidirectional mode. If you're in a situation where that's not happening, then do it, do bidirectional because it's going to speed it up quite significantly. Now, usually uh, these slight imperfections happen when the, the speed is really fast. And so here we're maxed out and we can't really see much evidence of it. But you'll see later when we start playing with the zoom uh, and the frame size that that can adjust the speed a little bit. And, and there you can see problems start to crop up. And if you're in that situation, you may want to consider doing the following. So let's say we were in that situation now, which we're not. Um, you may be able to lower the scan speed a little bit, still have an advantage from the bidirectional. Um, so remember that even at high speed, like if you go from bidirectional to unidirectional, you're going to 600 milliseconds from 300. So if you lower the speed, you're at 465, you're still not as slow as unidirectional, but usually lowering the speed a little bit takes care of those problems. So I'll see, um, hopefully we can illustrate that when we when we do some, some other workflows. But so that is the second condition under which uh, you might want to adjust scan speed. The first is for quality, but usually averaging is a better option. The second is if you have bidirectional on and uh, you're seeing imperfections on the edges, adjusting the scan speed a little bit can remove those imperfections while still giving you uh, part of the speed boost of the bidirectional.